Hello lovelies. It's a funny old world, in it, eh? I was gonna do a video kind of on the on more extending on the kind of philosophical and political and so on musings that I've had lately. Because I think I've identified the underlying problem to everything that goes wrong in, in human society. I don't have a solution yet, but I found the problem. And that problem is uh, essentially blind belief and an unwillingness to change. Yeah, we've kind of skirted around that issue. I, I was going to make it more kind of explicit. Uh, but the video I'm ending up making is about the YouTubers Union. So there's been some developments there and it does relate to that topic quite, quite well. So if you haven't been following events quite some time ago, Jörg Sprav, I hope I've pronounced his, his name correctly, uh, of the Slingshot channel, um, set up a kind of YouTubers Union, a purely voluntary sort of uh, association of YouTubers so that we could try and collectivize and present our information en masse to YouTube and, and argue our case. It was very informal, it wasn't really a union, um, but lots of people joined up, joined up or uh, at least joined up to keep an eye on it. But really not very much happened. You know, we collected our information, we did our surveys, we presented it to YouTube, Jorg talked to a few people at YouTube apparently, but nothing changed, and in fact things have continued to get worse over time, um, as I'm sure you're aware. I think we've suffered two more waves of adpocalypse. Adpocali? We've had more problems <laughs> since, and it doesn't seem to have stemmed the tide of issues at all. Uh, and that's unfortunate. But very recently, like the last few days, uh, Jorg came out and said the YouTubers Union is now allying with, I think it's IG Metal, which is one of the biggest unions in the world. I think it's definitely the biggest in Europe and the, and the biggest in Germany. And while they started out sort of helping out industrial workers, you know, metal workers and so on, they've expanded their remit over time and they now do a lot to represent and assists kind of casual part-time workers, contract workers, uh, falsely self-employed workers. There's this, there's this trick that a lot of companies do where they hire you, but they hire you as a contractor even though you're only working for them. And this is how you get things like zero-hour contracts and, and issues like that. It's, it's not very good and um, the EU in particular has been kind of nibbling away at companies' ability to do this over time. And a lot of that has been down to pressure from trade unions like IG Metal. So that's kind of put the cat amongst the pigeons. <laughs> but what I find particularly interesting and how this relates to the topic I was going to do a video on, what I found interesting is how the left, who you would think would be all pro-union and uh, pro-workers' rights and pro-personal individual rights and so on, aren't. <laughs> pro those things and how the right which you associate with small government anti-unionization free market worshippers and so on you know the the libertarian right and and traditional conservatives and all the rest they are more pro if not specifically pro the union they've become pro some kind of government regulation and interference when it comes to silicon valley social media companies I, I find that interesting. Now, I don't want to upbraid the right for being hypocrites on this issue, and some people aren't. They're just hostile anyway, even if it costs them. I guess there's something to be said for ideological purity. But rather, I want to praise them. You have observed a problem. You have seen that there's an issue. And even though all the solutions that seem to present themselves go against your ideological core, you have assessed the evidence and you seem to have come to an independent conclusion that at least in this case and possibly some others we we can hope that this has awakened you collective action collective bargaining unionization things like government regulation and inter interference in the market is warranted i don't think a lot of you are necessarily thinking this through but this is something that has happened to you and that has opened your eyes yeah there was the, was the saying a liberal is a conservative who's never been mugged, to which I append, <laughs> yeah, a conservative is a liberal who's never been unemployed, right? <laughs> because it, sometimes it takes that negative experience to 
to knock the edges off your ideology and, and make you open up to other ideas. So I'm, I'm going to try <laughs> not to upbraid you for hypocrisy, which is very big of me because hypocrisy really, really grips my shit. Um, but I, I'm happy that you recognize this, recognize this issue. But why have they recognized it? Well, they've recognized it because there is a bias in Silicon Valley against conservatives and so on. And if I wasn't such a principled chap, I would think that would be a good thing because the less that they're able to spread their ideas and to to argue with people and and so on, then the less influence they have. And you know, in the long run, that's going to be good for everybody. However, I don't actually believe that. I believe that ideas need to be tested. And if I'm wrong, as they have proven to be wrong about uh, regulation and unionization, then I want to find out that I'm wrong and I want to change my mind in the same way that a lot of them have. Whereas the left seems to be well, the left, the modern pseudo left that's left people like me on the what's it called the, the dirtbag left behind I, I guess um, they seem to be perfectly willing to engage in censorship at the drop of a hat I, I, I just, I just beg as belief and uh, I've even seen some of them come out against this idea of the YouTubers union though a lot of the media seems to be kind of confused about all this so it is conservatives, right-wingers and so on, many of whose views I find repugnant, who have suffered the most from censorship, particularly on YouTube, and yet we have a traditionalist left-wing solution to this in collectivization, collective bargaining, unionization and so on. But this, this, is, this is a good thing, right? Individually, we can't get anything out of YouTube. We can't even get them to reply to emails for the most part, right? The union, collective action, that gives us a, a chance of representation, a voice at the table, and because it's now tied to a proper union, we now have access to legal counsel, um, and we can apply financial pressure on the same kind of scale that advertisers and companies and so on do. So this evens the playing field. There is a danger in that they'll just throw up their hands and say, fuck it, and cut us all loose. But I don't think it's really economically viable for them to do that, or viable in, in PR terms. Overall, I think this is, this is a very good thing, a very good move. And they've given, them, given YouTube a deadline to reply to this. Um, they're also talking about using the union lawyers to make sure that YouTube properly complies to the GDPR and so on. This, this is all good stuff. It should make them more transparent, more communicative, and give us some means to agitate and pressure in the future, hopefully, to return channels to monetization, to undelete channels, and so on, where these things happen unjustly. So I, I can only see it as a good thing, and I welcome people changing their minds. You know, we should all be willing to change our minds when, when the evidence is there, and the evidence has been there that the free market simply doesn't work here because creators who actually create the content that makes the platform viable don't have a voice, don't have a say, don't have the economic clout, at least not individually, to make changes happen. So hopefully this this will make the difference. I mean, we've all suffered to some degree, I'm sure, from spurious post removals and suspensions on Twitter or YouTube or Facebook or Instagram or wherever you, you care to mention. You know, there's plenty of people that just flash a bit of skin, not even a nipple, not even a hint of a bush, and still get their Instagram accounts taken down. A lot of this stuff seems to be automated, which is vulnerable to mass flagging. Um, a lot of stuff doesn't seem to involve a human being, and there doesn't seem to be any consistency to the YouTube censorship. For example, you saw my video, uh, The Arsehole Spiral, the other day. It's kind of the opposite of a purity spiral, right? But it's got the swear word, arsehole, right in the title. Um, that got demonetized, unsurprising. On a whim, <laughs> I appealed, and it got returned to monetization. But then we have also had the hashtag, no PayPal for Nazis, trending. I did a video on that, in which I don't believe I sweared particularly much. Uh, it shouldn't be that controversial, it's just reporting on what's happening. Demonetized, confirmed by manual review. 
There doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to what videos get remonetized and which ones don't under supposed human review. So I just appeal everything because there are no guidelines, there's no rationale, there's no pattern that I can discern. So we need them to be more transparent. We need them to talk to us and the union is a way of forcing them to do that. So I, I think this deserves our backing, our support, and I shall continue to watch with interest. But don't let it escape your notice that this is a traditional left-wing approach to a problem like this. And that some of you have, at least in this instance, been forced to admit that getting the, the government to interfere, which is what some people in the US want to do, to regulate the market, getting the government to interfere to protect our rights as workers, getting the union to speak up on our behalf is a productive and positive thing that's capable of applying pressure on the same level that advertisers do. Now, if this is true in this instance that you have personally experienced, might it not be true in other areas? Might collectivization, the protection of workers' rights, the protection of individual rights, might this not also be a good thing that we can accomplish by collective bargaining? Just worth a thought. And to the people on the left who are cheering on the censorship, some of you are thankfully confused <laughs> because this is being uh, done through a union. Certainly the media seems to be confused about this because even though it tends to be right-wingers, libertarians and conservatives who have been most heavily censored, this is a union and you know, a left-wing solution to the problem. But a lot of left-wing left -wing activists seem to be happy about censorship and deplatforming and all the rest of it and are speaking out against a union. Hmm. Zang.